Good morning. Hello, friends. Um, it's so nice to see you all, and we are recording this, so there are future people maybe watching as well, or those who will be joining us in a little bit. But we wanted to say good morning and hello, and thank you for being here. This is our first time um, collaborating on a workshop with this Sustainability Center at the City of Cleveland and Ron Sheldon and I'm Nicole McGee from Upcycle Parts Shop and Julie Verdon is here with Ramp Arts and all of you are here. So it's not only a first time collaboration, it's also a virtual workshop. And so that's a new space for all of us. Is anyone here using Zoom for the first time right now today? Yeah. You can put your hand up. All right, awesome, welcome. I. Um, I'm right here at Upcycle Part Shop on St. Clair Avenue, which can be a loud street. So you're kind of having a, a place-based experience, maybe audibly occasionally as I, as I talk and welcome you. But I just wanted to kick, kick things off with a, um, a welcome and, and share with you how we're all a little nervous, but very excited to be doing this today because we've worked really hard and planned a lot on how to do this and how to connect um, around art and waste reduction and connection and creativity and actually even being together in person is one of the plans. So just some housekeeping. We have the um, question and answer, the chat box. Any questions can go in there and we'll do questions and answers at the end of our um, session. Hopefully have time for as many as we get in, but you're welcome to chat. And if you do um, chat, it, it likely goes out to everyone. So just um, that, if that's your intention, that's what will happen. Or you can look for an individual and send it to them privately. Um, also, we're going to mute all of you because um, we want to feature the person who's speaking. So that's something that Kathy will be doing. And we are recording this so that we can um, share it later, just so you know, um, it will be recorded. The order of events is that um, Kathy is going to share with us information and education on plastics pollution and sort of the big problem. And then we're going to hear a a little bit about um, upcycle part shop and how we sort of we don't um, we're not a solution but we work on the problem ourselves in, in, a, in a way and then Ron is going to share with us his artwork and how he connects internationally and um, works to educate as well as inspire and take the message further and then Julie will share with us um, an art exhibit she has at Ramp Arts that features some of that work and then we'll talk about next steps so we're gonna have a great morning and we're excited that you're all here. You might wanna set it up to speaker view so that the person speaking is the person you see. And we do have some slides to share and we hope everything will go, out, go off without any glitches, but if there are any, thank you in advance for your patience. And um, I think we'll go ahead and move forward. The one thing though, before we, we begin, we can't do an icebreaker because we're really paying attention to time, but let's just take a moment and look wherever you are around you and notice the things that are plastic. We can't control this in many cases. Sometimes we can, but there's a lot of it, right? Even just the chapstick or the pen or the coffee mug. It's in all kinds of places and we're gonna talk about the problem, but we're also not going to get sad and depressed. We're going to talk about it and educate and work together on learning more together. So thank you and um, Kathy is up next. Okay, thank you, Nicole. I'm going to bring up my slides. And can everyone see this? Yes. Okay, great. Um, as Nicole mentioned, I'm Kathy Lynn. I'm the Sustainable Cleveland Manager for the City of Cleveland Mayor's Office of Sustainability. And what I'd like to do very briefly is give an overview of plastics and the issue of plastic pollution. As Nicole just mentioned, and in an earlier email, what I had suggested you do before the workshop is to just go into one room of your home and look at all the plastic that is in that room. And you can do it in any room in the, the bedroom, the bathroom, the kitchen. You can do it in your office, in your car. And, and I think many times we're very surprised by how much plastic we see everywhere. And th there's a good reason for that. It's because plastic is cheap, it's durable, it's waterproof, it's flexible. Um, so we use it 
for a lot of things because it brings us many benefits, especially if we look at healthcare, our electronics, transportation, and food preservation. So plastic does bring us a lot of benefits. However, with those benefits come the costs and consequences. And some of those costs are associated with the environment. Think we're all familiar with the plastic bags stuck in the trees or blowing across the street and in our yards. We've also seen images like that. We're all very familiar with plastic litter in our streets. What I don't think is always appreciated, however, is how the plastic in our streets ends up in our rivers, our lakes, and then eventually in the ocean. So we initially buy a plastic item at the store. If it's not disposed of proper, properly or recycled, it will sometimes end up in the street. Then when we have large storms, maybe like what we had on Labor Day, we have large amounts of rain that then take that trash into the storm drain. From there, it goes through the pipes and will end up in our river, our lake, and then eventually into the ocean. So there are millions of metric tons of plastic that end up in our oceans every year. And this is then what we see on some of our beaches that trash that's in the water will wash up onto our beaches. This is a beach in Hawaii. And many of us think of Hawaii as having very pristine beaches. Unfortunately, however, many beaches around the world look like this. And it's not just something that happens somewhere else. This is a photo from Edgewater Beach before Cleveland Metro Park started cleaning the beaches up every day. Um, this is what some of our beaches still look like if they're not being managed properly. What then happens with these large plastic items is that when they're exposed to sunlight or to wave action, these large pieces of plastic start to break down into these fragments that are called microplastics, or even sometimes in, they get down to nanoplastics, which means we can only see them with a microscope. And this just gives you some idea of how small these pieces can get, but again, even smaller so small that they're microscopic. And then what happens is our wildlife mistakes these plastic bits for food. And it, this isn't just restricted to animals in the water. Camels and cattle have also been found with plastic in their stomachs. And not only do animals eat the plastic, but they also can get tangled up in it. And I just want to draw your attention for a moment to Mae West, who is the snapping turtle at the top of the photo. And believe it or not, Mae West is one of the lucky ones. She has survived being in this very bad situation. She adapted to her situation. And she is still alive. She's an educational animal in California. But some of these other animals may not have been able to get out of their situation and may not have survived. And again, these are not just tragedies that happen somewhere else. These are images from the Lake Erie Nature and Science Center and some of the animals that they've brought in that have gotten tangled up in plastic. So this is all very depressing and I um, apologize for that. However, the good news is that there are things that we can all do 
no matter what age, to take action. The first thing is to rethink your purchases. Many of the, the disposable items that end up as trash and polluting our environment are packaging. So when you're shopping, make sure to pick those choices that have less packaging. Also contact the manufacturers and let them know that you want to see less packaging. Also, you can reduce the amount of plastic that you're using. A easy thing to do is look at your single use disposable plastics and substitute these for other items. Instead of that plastic grocery bag, take a reusable bag. Skip the straw. Bring your own reusable mug or bottle with you wherever you go. And it's not only the items I just mentioned, but also think about your clothes. Think about items that you can get from a thrift shop or items that you can donate. Yeah. And lastly, we'll talk about recycling. Make sure that you follow the recycling guidelines in your community. But, and remember, reduce, reuse, and recycle. And with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Nicole and she's gonna talk to us about the Upcycle Park Shop. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. That was great. Can you all see my screen now? Yes. I am sharing a screen with uh, Upcycle. Okay, so thank you for that. Um, Upcycle Part Shop is not a solution to this problem, but it is a way to address what we have and we call it creative reuse. So I'm going to advance my slides. There we go. We, we like to say, the, <laughs> the last slide that was a little sticky said, we like to say we, let, we make less waste and more art. And we do that from our world headquarters in the St. Clair Superior neighborhood of Cleveland. And it looks like this from the outside. So the first way you walk in the door is a retail shop. We get materials donated to us. And these are materials that still have life in them, but sometimes people think of as finished with their first use or leftover. Um, Kathy said that sometimes slides when we're advancing them get a little sticky and she was right. There we go. Our work at Upcycle Part Shop, we are a nonprofit organization that runs like a business, but we have a mission to provoke creativity and promote community through reuse. So that's the mission that we work to every day. And I have to say that this workshop is phenomenally on target with exactly what we try to do, the provoking creativity and promoting community. Reuse is, is how we get things in the door and, and what we do. It's about possibilities and thinking about materials. The sort of the big question is, can we take materials from the waste stream, give them a new life, inspire people to be creative and connect people to one another? And can we make it a business model? And the answer, now that we're six years old at Upcycle Part Shop is yes, we can. And we are so grateful for the support we've gotten from many people, many of whom are on this call right now or, or maybe watching it later. There's been such a collective support of this endeavor. And the way that we look, the way that our business runs is that we have a retail shop. And, um, we take in donations of usable materials. So it's like a thrift shop, we're all familiar with that model, but we do keep it to creative materials. And we have them for sale at very low cost. We spend a lot of energy powered by many volunteers and phenomenal talents and really dedicated staff and um, really generous donors. We spend a lot of energy in sort of capturing the value, making it look good and then being open for retail hours. Sometimes people say to us, well, what would you do with this? And since we're a retail shop, we say, I don't know, but the customers decide. So this little display was funny because I thought these little plastic animals were cute and I haven't seen them since. So they clearly found their new home. We also um, spend time demonstrating through our workshops and programming. 
So we have the retail shop and then we do workshops and programs. I pulled these pictures because they are um, two amazing colleagues that work here at Upcycle Part Shop, Cass and Marissa, and they're demonstrating how we make bottle blossoms from plastic bottles. So again, not a solution, but a demonstration that there's value in the waste stream, that we can continue the life of something rather than throwing it away, and that we can connect with other people and do this together in a collaborative effort. Here's some pictures of a workshop where we did that. Sorry, I'm, going, I'm having a hard time with these slides. But I think these pictures are really beautiful. And you can see, you know, there's kind of a couple things that we're doing here at Upcycle Part Shop. We're excited about the reduction and reusing of materials. And we love making art and being creative. And we love connecting people. But we also love what I feel like this picture captures, that like zenful state that we all get into. It's really good for our brains to be creative. And I think if you're on this call, you know that. And, and I know that um, Ron will be talking next. The creativity piece of it is, um, it's, it's, it does many things for us. And that's an important piece of it too. And we all have masterpieces inside of us, right? Like the person who made this that day probably came in and said, I'm not an artist, I don't know what I'm doing. But we like to think that, that you know, all of us inside of us, the small child inside of all of us were artists when we were small. And so we know that it's in there and we know that inspiration is there. And we also know that materials lying everywhere around us can be how we tap into that and how we start thinking about value and what we bring into our homes and what we throw away and what we don't. Connection and connecting people, talking to each other, strangers meeting each other, that's a big piece of how we do what we do and the why. We do that, um, I, I'm speaking as if normal times because I know normal times will re resume one day. So we do that out in the world um, at community parks and with organizations and with the Rock Hall and different partners like that. And we also do that in our neighborhood in the St. Clair Superior part of Cleveland. It's important for us to be a place that's here on purpose and we value being neighbors with our with um, folks who have been in this neighborhood much longer than us. So we love being in St. Clair Superior and we love what we're building with our neighbors. And specifically one way that we um, are really working on, are working with our neighbors is elevating creative work that's already happening. I like this picture of David, who's a neighbor of ours, because David has his passion to have an art cart that he bikes around and he sets up various places in the neighborhood to connect with his neighbors and make art. He reuses materials to do that. And currently he's working on talking about the census while he's doing it. So that's the kind of work we're really happy to support. And David's the kind of person that we really love, that we know, and we want to support him in all of our work. We also do programming with leftover materials, the donated things we get with schools. And in these photos, we're encouraging students to think about leftover materials as innovation fodder. You know, if you can innovate and design a prototype from something like why can't we use what we already have and how can we think about the properties of a material when we think of upcycling it's sort of like what are the properties that that had before and how can we use those to capture what we're trying to communicate. So that's an area that we're really growing and developing. And while we're not doing it in person like we were when we took these pictures last school year, we are working on building um, some virtual programming with kits that look on the left and then on the right is an example of how that's starting to look. So that's kind of um, coming and we're excited about it because we're not only talking about waste reduction and inspiration and creativity, we're also talking about entrepreneurship and innovation and our business model and how the passion and the resources and assets that you have right within reach might be what you need to start thinking like an entrepreneur. So that's an exciting program we wanted to share with you. Our website is there at the top in case you didn't know or in case you would like to know, please note that. And then the picture below this is just a, a screenshot of our current way to access us. If you're local and you want to come or you didn't realize we've reopened, we have reopened and we have private appointments now. So that's the only way to come and shop with us, but it's a really great way because you have the whole place to yourself. So when you go to our website, you'll see private appointments and we'll show you and give you examples of how to book your appointment. And um, it's really fun and we're really excited to see you. And we also are very safe and do require masks. So for the presentation now that you've been waiting for, next up is Ron to talk about his work, his inspiration and his art hats. I'll be back later.
Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ron Shelton. I'm a multimedia artist located here in Lakewood, Ohio. Uh, just giving you a little bit of background on me. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm an artist. What started my journey with plastics was my developing of an online arts magazine platform called High Art Fridays, otherwise known as HAF. We started on my Facebook page in 2013 and we kept growing. And the reason why I got its name High Art Fridays was every Friday I would select artists at that time from Pinterest, unusual non-linear contemporary art, and create these virtual galleries uh, on, my, on my page. And they kept growing in popularity and we began to, we started our own group and it kept growing. And the majority of the people were actually international artists. Um, what I kept seeing through this process is that artists all over the world using plastics as a medium and it's amazingly inter innovative methods of creating plastics, uh, particularly artists from coastal regions. Uh, one artist from Ghana, an artist from El Salvador, an artist from, artist from LA, uh, an artist from South Korea are like sort of the, the four primary artists that I paid really close attention to and I would feature them periodically on our site. And it kept growing. I kept seeing plastic. I kept seeing artists from France, artists from Serbia. You know, so this, this plastic problem became, it sort of hit me through art. Art was the, the medium the vehicle that drove my awareness to the problem of plastics. So at that time, I started plastic hoarding. Before that insight, I had no, you know, I had no interest in plastic. I had no, you know, interest in, in seeing the, the devastating aspect of it. But until I started plastic hoarding, I was amazed at the amount of plastics that one person can generate in three months' time. So that was a big eye opener for me. So that was a point that I started. The mediums that I was working with, I just sort of dropped them and just sort of picked up plastic. So I've been working in plastics now for the past three and a half years. I've exhibited large scale installation pieces in this Northeast Ohio area. Uh, I was at Cannes Triennial 2018, which that piece is still hanging in the stairway. I exhibited in Firefish in 2018, 2019, and I ex exhibited in Rooms to Let in 2018 and 2019. So this project started, HAF Connects is the name of the project we're working with now. I, it's, it's, it's connecting glo global artists with local artists under a common problem, which is plastics. So this premise uh, is basically centered around these wire frame cone structures that are pro approximately 23 inches in height and like a nine or 10 inch diameter. During my residency, I was art in residency at Art House last year. I was working with a group of 23 third graders and that was the moment that I had, I had my aha moment when these kids started, we implemented this project with these third graders. They actually built their own cone structures and they embellished these structures with plastics. That project was so insightful and so engaging and it was creative that these third graders really just like, the bell went off in my, to my head. So I, because it was real, relatively an easy medium to work with, I took this project further. <clears throat> I approached the Stephen um, Foundation and the, and the Ohio Arts Council. I got funding to uh, support this project, which we call HAF Connects. It's connecting artists all over the world with local artists. I joined forces with the Visit Arts Collective here in Cleveland. as a group of four artists, Gina Washington, Chester Hopkins Bay, Lolita Wilson, and Cole, Brooks, Cole Robinson Brooks. Those four artists, along with several other, other artists from the Northeast Ohio, joined forces with artists from Ghana, artists from El Salvador, artists from Korea. And the works, I, I shipped these cone structures across the globe. These artists embellished this, these cones and shipped them back to me. What was what threw a wrench in our in our project was the onset of the Corona virus. We had a pretty extensive agenda planned, but with the virus, everything shut down. This was this happened in like March, April, when everything shut down. We had planned to do rooms to let this year, but that was canceled. So we were kind of like at a at a at a crossroad. And luckily, an arts group out of Mozambique called EmptyRooms.org 
they started a virtual arts residency program. They, one of, two of the members were also part of Hired Fridays. They saw our work and they invited us to participate in this virtual workshop. So that was our first virtual experience, which was pretty successful. It featured all the artists in our project and they uh, it, you know, displayed this, this virtual uh, project. So right now we are really uh, happy to um, bring this project to Northeast Ohio. We are currently exhibiting the work at Ramp Arts Gallery in the 78th Street Studios. That, that happened just so, sort of on the cuff, but we, it's a very, this is our first major exhibition and we're gonna to be touring that show. And hopefully in December, we will be having, not hopefully, we will be having a final uh, exhibition at the Art House on Denison in, in, in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, so at this point, we want, to, I'm gonna show a little video uh, about uh, the project sort of giving a demonstration on how to build your art hat. Uh, we, I have already built a number, a number amount of the frame structures. And once you see the video, it's a basically a basic sort of simple uh, instructional sort of basic uh, how to, to approach this, this concept. So once we see the video, then you may have questions. I can answer the questions. Uh, and it, it's pretty easily, easily followed. Uh, so if Kathy can just start the video, hope everything works out okay. We may have a glitch, but if not, I'll just sort of talk through the video as it's as it's as it runs. Well, first, Ron, did you want to show the different hats? Uh, okay, yeah, we'll show some hats. Yeah, okay, we're going to see some of the hats that were created uh, from. We're going to start with hats that were created from third grade students from. Uh, my art house residency. Actually, so, we're going to start with your hats. Ron. Okay. Well, actually, this this is my hat. Uh, this is called plastic fire. It is one of the things Kathy pointed out earlier was how the medical industry uses plastic. These are actually medicine bottles that we all see the amber colored medicine bottles. I actually melted these bottles uh, at each bottle and strung them up and attach them to the frame. Next slide. This particular hat is, uh, is called tor Plastic Tornado. It consists of, believe it or not, laundry detergent bottle handles. Uh, my installation at for Can Triennial, the majority of that work consisted of the, those colorful, wonderful laundry detergent bottles. I frequented laundry, det laundry mats every week and I got like two large bags of empty laundry detergent bottles every week. And each of these pieces are actually the handles that I cut from the containers. And the laundry detergent bottles looks like this. I cut the handles off, melted them, uh, and fused them together and strung them up onto my crown structure. Next slide. And this one is called plastic shards. It's also created from bits and, and fragments cut from laundry detergent bottles and other plastic resources. You know, um, working with plastics, I, I know how you know, dangerous it is, but I've grown attached to the medium. I mean, it's very versatile. It's very colorful. I mean, it, it just became a medium that I began to cherish, oddly enough, uh, that I, I embraced it as any, other me as any other artist would embrace any other medium. Next slide. And, and this is actually the final day of my art residency at Art House. Uh, each of the kids are wearing their own art hat. Uh, this group was a very lively group. They really much, they inspired me. You know, they showed me just to let go and that creative because I had this structured syllabus and I just ended up throwing it out the window because the kids just took over their own agenda and it just worked out so well on, in the long run. And this is one of the samples that one of the students uh, from the, the third grade class created. They actually built the wire frames themselves. And then they, and I had a bunch of plastic around. They selected their own plastics and just embellished them, embellished their crowns themselves. And these were all eight and nine year olds artwork. And these are some of the professional works 
This is Cole Robinson Brooks, who is part of the Visit Arts Collective, who's one of the Northeast Ohio artists. Her cone uh, plastic she used was basically uh, uh, coils and woven plastic bags that she wove into the frame. This is Gina Washington. She's also a member of the Visit Arts Collective. This project, her project consists of plastic bottle caps and uh, hearing aid batteries that she incorporated, incorporated into each of the bottle caps. This project is from Chester Hopkins Bay. Basically, he wrapped the cone with plastic and, and melted it to melt it, fused it to, to the plastic. This is Charmaine Spencer. She's an artist here in, in Cleveland, Ohio. Her piece is consisting of styrofoam. She broke fragments of styrofoam and wove them within the wire frame. This is Cynthia Manet. She's an artist from Los Angeles. Her piece, Cynthia is an established professional artist who's been working with plastics for probably over 10 years. She makes these amazingly large life-size animals out of plastic. And she uh, agreed to do this project. And this, this is like all plastic. She wove strips of plastic within the wire frame. So you can get an idea of like the, the versatility and how you can use anything that you, uh, these, these plastic pieces were from like bottles that she had collected. She used to cut in strips and just wove them into the frame. And this very unique structure, this very unique, probably one of my favorite cones was produced by Lolita Wilson. She's also a local artist. She's part of the Visit Arts Collective. She made this amazing structure out of cigarette filters. Most of us, when, they, when we think of cigarette filters, we don't think of them as plastic, but cigarette filters are in fact plastic. They contain plastic fibers. And there's a company called uh, TerraCycle. They actually collect these cigarette filters and go through this chemical process and they take it back to plastic, to plastic pellets, and they actually make other items from it. So this, this project was very creative, probably one of the most creative and innovative projects cones that was, we had, but it was also the most smelliest project. I call it stinky, because uh, it, it, it actually, you can just imagine, you know, cigarette butts, cigarette filters, the amount of, of smell. So this actually, this piece is actually one of the pieces that's hanging in Rampart's gallery. And they, they share with me how their whole gallery kind of smelled like cigarette butts. So. But it was it's really nicely done, and it, it, it opens our mind as how broad and the range of plastics it, is in the products that we use. This is Patrick Pago Turkson. He's from Ghana. He is one of the our premier artists as well. He's a professional artist. He is one of the artists that was influenced by he by coastal regions. His coastal region of Ghana was overwhelmed by plastics, specifically flip flops. So Patrick creates these large scale tapestries of intricately woven, middled, cut pieces of, of, of uh, fragmented uh, uh, flip flops and makes these amazing art pieces. This particular piece he created is from plastic fishing nets. Okay, was that all the slides? Sorry, yes. Now I'm going to awesome. switch to the video you were okay. talking about. Okay, so now we're going to start the video. This is a short demonstration of how you can embellish your frame. Uh, it's, it's very uh, sim simple. I mean, the, the, the creativity is, is endless. Uh, and I'm basically going through right now the type of tools you'll need. Um, basically, scissors. A knife. I got a phone call. Sorry. Uh, so I'm basically going through the type of equipment. It's like you know, you need scissors, a sharp knife, and I use an awl, an awl or a punch tool to punch like the heavier plastics. So we're going to be using different like thickness of plastics. This here I'm cutting is a plastic bag. I'm cutting it into strips and I'm actually tying the plastic strips onto the frame. This is probably one of the most easiest, user-friendly, less complicated uh, lack of tools that, that, that can be created. And you can create a wonderful piece 
with your crown just by with the plastic strips. You can create a montage of really interesting, you know, collaboration of different colors, color schemes. And that is just a sample of using plastic strips which is tied onto the frame. And this is the notorious like water uh, laundry detergent bottles, which is a little bit more challenging because you have to cut the bottle up into segments. And this is, you know, you need a really, really sharp knife. So if there's children, you really want to have parent parental guidance. I wouldn't suggest children using the knife so parents can actually cut uh, the pieces for them. You just basically cut it into sections. And once you get the sections cut, you can just start to add them to, the, to your frame. And this is where you need the punch tool to punch small holes into the frame and you actually you know, attach the, the, the pieces with wire to the frame. And in this part, I'm actually gritting off like squares, three inch by three inch squares, which has been sort of a, sort of a common motif that I've used in, in many of my installations, three inch by three inch squares. And once you cut the squares, you punch holes in all the corners and attach them to the frame. And one thing that's really interesting that I found to be a cons consistent theme is that I use the handles. The handles are often used uh, as like a mask. They have like a mask uh, shape or motif to them. And a lot of the students use them to incorporate them as to create like a face. So the mask is cut, the face, the handle is cut off and that can be incorporated into the mask. And that is actually one of the handles, which is, you know, I often use as a face, but it reminds me of an African mask. And so, and plastics that you find in your home, they come in different thicknesses. You know, there's like a, a, a really thin plastic. Plastic bags are really hard to work with because they're so flimsy. One thing Colet Robinson Brooks did, which was pretty ingenious, uh, she twisted, she coiled the plastic bags into really tight coils and strips and wove them into the frame. Uh, so that's, that's one way you can use plastic bags. Um, and that's the, the all that I was referring to is a punch tool. You punch the holes into the plastic, but this is a heavier plastic. Each plastic has a different thickness and each thickness has different attributes and each thickness you can do different things with it. So here I'm just punching the holes into the plastic. And then I will actually attach these segments into the frame. This is actually the hat that I'm working on in the video. This is actually, it's still in work in progress, but this is how far I've gotten this hat. Like I said, the possibilities are endless. You will be in the process of collecting your own plastics, you know, uh, your own plastics in your house, and those are the plastics that you will be incorporating into your into your frame. And these here are like some smaller strips of the heavier plastic. You, can, the, you know, the, the possibilities are endless. You can add, you can cut different shapes, different sizes, and you know, you can use wire to attach the heavier plastics, and you can just tie on thinner plastics onto the frame. And you can create a pretty interesting, you know, composition. So that's pretty much, uh, I think we're probably coming to the end of this uh, particular video. Uh, but if you have any questions, please put them in the chat box at this time. Uh, and ask me and I can answer any questions you may have. So just feel free to, you know, just formulate some questions. Like maybe you have some ideas of the different types of plastics you would like to use and I can help you. If you have any, any issues with that plastic, I can help you like, you know, maneuver and sort of implement that plastic into the cone structure. I mean, like, like I said, the possibilities are endless. This was just sort of a basic, you know, uh, you know, basic, simple uh, concept of using basic materials. But you can be very creative. You can use the possibilities are endless. Well, so now I think we're going to go to Nicole, and she's been working on her hat, and we want to see your progress. Okay, thank you so much, Ron. I loved watching that video. It's so nice to see the tactics you're using. 
And Gina, I believe is on this call, and Melita, your hats are amazing and able. Thank you for your work and for joining us today to be part of this. Um, it's, I think we're all learning together. So I, I don't know if we actually explicitly said it out loud, but if you're local, you are able to get your own wireframe art hat. And um, I got really excited when I got my own from Ron. Like it's a special thing. And um, I didn't even want to do anything to it because the frame is just so cool. But if you're not local, there will also be a follow-up video to show you how to make your own and with some um, specifics on the type of wire and the size. So this part is sort of, um, let's start talking and thinking about our wire frames because we're thinking about the plastics we use, the things we throw away. And, um, you know, I want to show you mine. So um, here it is. So you, it's kind of hard to see the part that's not um, finished yet, but I started and I went with the theme of things in my kitchen, right? Because actually, plastic, you know, there's plastic everywhere. So this is a kitchen themed plastic art hat. So um, Ron gave me the tip that he starts at the top, but I didn't, I didn't, because I didn't know that, but I, I started at the bottom. So this is the, the part that is not quite done. But what I actually started with was using um, it looks so colorful, but it's actually netting, right? So this is a little basket I grabbed from work, but you recognize these kind of nets from oranges or garlic bags. Um, this kind of plastic can be cut. It's very versatile. We love to use it with the work we do um, creatively. And so I started working with that. And my other material was a twisty tie and um, bread ties. So I am a pretty um, chaotic approach artist. I, I made that term up. I approached my art without thinking about it. I just kind of lean into what I'm like feeling and seeing. So the technique is pretty um, simple. That I, This is my technique, which is to grab the piece. Maybe I cut it if I feel like I'm running low on these and then I just started twisting it. If I don't cut it in half, then it ends up being sort of a thicker, like a thicker finish. If I do cut it in half, then it covers and it's thinner. So that's an example of the one I just did. So when I'm saying thicker, I mean, it's like, this is like a, you know, sort of a, a thicker line than this green one underneath where I cut that in half. So it's kind of, you know, this is a limitation of Zoom. I'm not really sure how well you can see this lovely, crazy, wild thing, but I love the colors. And then I did embellish. I love that Ron uses the word embellish. I embellished with some twisty ties, some bread ties. And um, my neighbor gave me a bunch of netting. She didn't even know I was working on this, but I was kind of, I had used up what I had saved. I don't really like the word hoarding, Ron, but I know it's an effective word, but I had I saved a bunch of these and I happened to have a bunch of them in my, in my drawer. And so I used what I had and then a neighbor gave me a bunch more. So I think I'll keep going. And then when I run out, I will um, maybe do that, the more of this approach because I want maybe it to like blow in the wind. So it's beautiful as you can tell, and it's so much fun to wear. Sometimes I wear it at home just for fun. And I can't wait to wear it when I'm around more of you. That is my art hat. Thank you for asking. And I believe Julie is up next. Is that right? And Julie is Hi. up next. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. All right. So I am actually, I've got quite the hustle bustle going on behind me. I don't know if you all can see the activity. But I'm coming to you from Ramparts Gallery, and we are based out of the 78th Street Studios building. We're on the second floor if you've never been to the building. We do, our gallery is open. It's open Wednesday through Friday from 11 to 6. And we also are inviting people in, like Nicole, we're inviting people in for special appointment if you just want to have like a safe private um, experience, gallery experience. And so I am going to um, put my mask on and turn the phone turn my camera around so you can actually see the show that we have up right now. We've got um, several of the artists that you've already been talking about and I think are on the call today. So here we go. I'm going to put my mask on and can you all hear me, still hear me okay? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Okay. So, all right. So this is our gallery. Um, we are our gallery. We're working artist gallery. We have five owners 
And I'm just, here's a little, here's a little sneak peek of Ron, one of Ron's, one of my favorite Ron hats. Um, and I'm going to pan over. Here's one of the um, hats that is in the show, the HAF Connects show. And we talked about um, Gina's hat made out of um, the hearing aid batteries. Um, really cool hat. Hey, Julie, could you, could you flip okay? your, could you flip it back the other way? So yeah, that, that's on. better for us. Right. Yes. Is that going? Okay, thank you. thank you. Sorry, I can't, from my end, it looks like it's flipping okay. And here we have Natalie. Natalie is working on her hat here. We got a little bit of a jump on the project because Ron showed us how to make, um, make these hats um, because we wanted to prepare for the um, class today. The court, the, here's some more hats. Um, and this is one too that we Ron just talked about of wrapping plastic bags. And that's by Cole Robinson. This hat is by Charmaine Spencer, and she's a uh, studio artist here in the 78th Street Studios building, and she does beautiful work, mostly usually with natural materials, however. And here's Rick over here. Rick, say hi. Hi, how are you all? Rick, what are you doing? Well, I'm taking some um, old CDs, and uh -huh. I am cutting them up, and I'm going to make um, kind of like a garland. Okay. So I'm not sure how that's going to look, but here's what I'm doing. I'm soaking my CDs in water to soften them, cutting them with my scissors, and then um, putting them in another bowl of water just to keep them a little soft. And then I'm using a hole punch to put a little hole in it. And I have some old telephone wire here that I'm going to use to... Uh, kind of string through the hole and uh, make my garland. Okay. Sounds fun, doesn't it? That does sound fun. Maybe a disco ball. Yeah, so you're using the, the, the discs. Yes. Those old discs that we don't use anymore. Here's another hat from the HAF Connects project. And this is by Patrick Turkson. Ron talked about that earlier. And here is Jeff. Say Hello. hi, Jeff. Jeff, what are you doing here? Well, I'm making a cone hat. I've got some uh, old uh, repurposed uh, blue tarp for uh, the, the circular wraparound. I've got some beer tab from a um, six pack and an onion skin bag on below. So it has this kind of kind of like a C form. I love your colors there. Thank you. And I like your, your beer pop top. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. You're welcome. Here's another uh, hat in the collection, in the installation. And hi, Randy. Well, hello there, Julie. How are you doing? I am so good. Okay, and you, you, you really morphed your hat into a, a different shape. I know, I, I, kind of have, <laughs> I kind of have an unsanctioned kind of stovepipe hat. It's not a cone. Okay. But um, it was my special request, so. Um, okay, yeah, wow. We're going to sew some plastic. Uh, we have a lot of this. We have some upcycled, plasticky, um, insulated bubble wrap. Oh. That I'm going to use as kind of a textile in this hat. And I'm sewing it onto this frame and around it, kind of Frankensteining it. I'm not really worried about a nice finish with this upcycled plastic coated wire. Wow. And this okay. literally would have gone, this, this was rescued um, out of the garbage. Wow. Okay. By your, by your lovely husband. Well, you all, you all are incredibly creative. And I just want to show you one last hat in the show. And this is from... Cynthia Minet, um, I, adore, I adore this one as well. Um, and Ron talked it earlier about Cynthia's. So I want to invite you all to come into the gallery. Um, we would love to see you get inspired. And I hope you all enjoy uh, making your hats. I'm turn it back over to you guys.
Okay, thank you, Julie. That was a great tour. Um, now, I, there are a couple questions in the chat box. So I'm gonna ask Ron these questions. First, are we allowed to use paint for clear plastics? And Ron, you're muted. Yes, paint should be fine. I mean, you know, if you're acrylic paint, it is like a plastic paint, paint, so it actually falls within that category. So yes, paint is fine. Okay, the next question, and I'm glad that this was asked, is when you use prescription bottles and melt them, what is the process, how, and is that stinky with chemicals released? And I definitely want to make sure that we emphasize that burning plastic yeah. is very toxic. Burning plastic is extremely toxic, and I wear a respirator, which is right here, and I wear goggles as well. Uh, when heat is attached to plastic, whether it's sunlight, any kind of heat, it activates the chemicals in it and it makes it more toxic, and that, that, that heating process sort of releases the chemicals, BPA, into, into the atmosphere, into the water, into everything. So I don't really uh, recommend melting it. I think melting is, you know, one of the more like um, challenging, you know, uh, 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 techniques. But if you do melt it, you definitely should use a respirator to help to, pr to protect yourself and definitely use goggles because the chemicals released uh, do uh, have impact on your eyes. You know, so I, I just don't recommend melting it. But you know, I was a little courageous and I probably am probably going to die in the next couple of years because I've been around plastic so long and it's all in my place. And I'm just like, I'm probably, you know, a plastic, living plastic being. So, but I wouldn't recommend some of these techniques at home. And definitely not for children. Definitely not, yes. Um, another question about the prescription bottles. Have you used them in any other ways? I have not. That's the only way that I've used them um, is through the melting, which I, I love. I mean, the types, it's like glass. It's such an art form. Melting these things is just, it's beautiful. I mean, it's very, very beautiful. And I, I you know, it's, it's like, it's like glass, it's like blowing glass, but it's plastic. So, but that's the only way that I use them is through the melting process. Okay, and then one of our participants is very anxious to get started and wants to know how to get one of these wire frames. So due to very generous support from our sponsors, we do have a limited number of wire frames available to participants in this workshop. Um, I do want to, to mention that this is a common ground workshop. This was partially funded through the Cleveland Foundation and a stipend for Common Ground. So I definitely want to thank the Cleveland Foundation for their support. So Ron has made a limited number of wire frames that are available for pickup today from three to four at the Upcycle Parts Shop. And then Nicole is also going to have a pickup on Wednesday, and she'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, so for those of you that are very anxious to get started, Ron and I will be at 64th and St. Clair today at 3 to 4 o'clock. So come visit us. And then you can also ask Ron any additional questions. Um, and actually, I do want to say, if you are going to come by today, if you could tell us in the chat box, just so that we know you're coming by and we'll be looking for you. So we know Jane is coming by. Um, so if there aren't any more questions, I'm going to turn it back over to Nicole. And she's going to, oh, does Ron have a question? Yeah, uh, I just want to make a comment. 
we will be including like links like to my website. Uh, we just published a new article on this project on my Hired Friday site. I'm going to include a link to my artistic uh, art site so you can see some of my installations. And we're going to in incorporate in the link a couple of the videos, the how-to videos, so you can get an idea of how the process is done. So that will be included in a follow-up email that you'll be all, all getting. Awesome. Okay, Nicole, do you want to go over our next steps? I do. So yeah, we're, we're starting the next steps already because um, this is the beginning. It's kind of like a train. You might not have known you're getting on with us, everyone, but we are, we've left the station and where we're heading is a couple other really, really fun stops. So you are inspired, which is perfect. And we're going to get you these art wireframes. And so I'm going to pull up a couple slides with some next steps. If you're a person who likes to write things down or pull out your phone, you might want to do that. We didn't want to overwhelm you, but that's why we made slides. So before I pull those up though, I'm wondering if after I'm finished, if Julie, if we could, if, if your team, that's like a manufacturing enterprise you have there, if, if we could see their progress again later. I just think I speak for everyone that that was really inspiring and I would love to like see and go back. <laughs> we want to go back to the gallery. And I also did not know if you soaked CDs, you could cut them with scissors. So thanks Rick Roscoe for that tip. That was Cool. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen and you can probably see it, right? This is Ron. Now we know Ron. That was so much fun. Thank you for sharing that work. And I wanted to pull up some of the next steps slides, which look like this. Okay, so here's the logistics. Today, we already have a couple committed people, which is perfect. We're we, as I shared, love connecting with people at Upcycle Part Shop, but we are only doing private appointments. So we are going to lovingly put Ron and Kathy outside at a table, and it's a beautiful day, and being outside, we have to worry less about the things we all worry about. So they will be outside um, at a table with some art caps, I'm sorry, art hats um, from three to four. So thank you for those of you who are coming by. And um, that is today. That's the quickest way to get the inspiration of the thing that you want in your hands. The alternative is Wednesday. September 16th, I will be doing the same thing, hanging out outside um, from 11 to 12 or four to six. So those are the assigned menu options of times. And then Ron is so generous, he has also shared his phone number. If you can't make those times and you really want this frame, which I'm imagining there's some of you that feel that way. Um, this is for local folks. I recognize not everybody is local, but Ron has shared his phone number and he would arrange a time for you to get your art wire frame so that you can begin this process. So that's one of the next steps. There's some more slides. Next step, the, after that, and this one's gonna be important. You're going to get an email with a lot of information and Ron just talked about that. Um, there will be some links. Those of you who are not local, there will be a link on how to make your own wireframe. And you can see, um, like Randy, you can go a little rogue too, it sounds like, with the, with the, the structure, but the idea of the cone is, is the same and it's sort of honoring Ron's vision, but the, you can, he'll show you through um, some resources how to make your own if you're not local. Um, and then Kathy put together a really wonderful waste audit how to. So those words together, waste audit, are a little intimidating, but what it means is really watching and paying attention to what goes into your landfill at home, the, the, the bag of garbage that we throw away, which doesn't really go anywhere, right? So we know all of that and it's kind of the bigger picture. It's, it can be a lot to think about, but if you start doing it as an audit, it doesn't form us. And Ron shared how that's a big part of his journey that he realized when he started saving all the plastics or hoarding them, that he saw how much um, he, he was generating himself. So we recommend doing that and Kathy will share a resource on that. And then there will be a lot more, including some recap of the next things I'm gonna share with you, okay? So you still with me? Yep. Meanwhile, you can go to visit Ramp Arts Gallery. And sadly, all those super friendly people are not there all the time making wire hat frames. I'm guessing they, they stop and they eat and they go home. But here's the way that you can go to Ramp Arts Gallery and see the um, exhibit yourself. And it's in the beautiful 78th Street Studio um, building. So the whole place is incredibly inspiring. And I think it's really awesome that they have shared with us how you can go until October 5th um, and make an appointment and reach out to them. So that website on the bottom is, um, is an important one to, to capture, but we'll be sending that out in the email as well. Okay. There's some more. Oh. So remember 
Fresh Air, this is a train. We have a continuing the conversation opportunity, Saturday, October 3rd, where Kathy, Ron, and I, we're getting the band back together again, and hopefully Julie too, maybe. And we're going to be here again virtually uh, to check in on how the art hats are going, to see if anybody needs some technical support and, and like how you're doing it or any questions about your waste audit, your design process, anything like that. So Saturday, October 3rd, 11 to 12, we're going to go ahead and send you that link over Zoom since you registered for this workshop and everyone is welcome. Even if you didn't get to see this live, you're welcome. We want you to sort of continue the conversation about all these topics. So that will be happening on Saturday, October 3rd. And if you can't make it, it's okay. This isn't, this isn't school, but it's a great way to sort of reconnect. And then, this isn't even the last one, but it's a pretty exciting one. We're going to celebrate together by doing what we named, I, there's that co-captain of the parade. I'm one of the captains. David November, who's on our board at Upcycle Part Shop and is the sustainability manager at Tri-C, is our co-captain. And we're calling it the Stand Apart Hat Sidewalk Parade. We felt pretty clever with the way the art hat is in that title, but the title doesn't really matter as much as the activity. We're going to get together in person, standing apart, with our hats on, and we're going to see each other's hats in person, which I can't wait to finish this and wear it and walk around with you guys. So that's happening um, Saturday, October 10th at 2 p.m. And this is a flyer about that. We're going to attach this to the email we send as a follow-up. But, you know, in these times where we don't really do enough in human form, this is an outdoor-only activity where we'll be wearing these. You'll know us by our decor. <laughs> and it's at the same place as the art hat pickups, um, 6419 St. Clair. And again, we're not actually coming inside. It's an outside activity. If the weather is inclement, we will reschedule and we will communicate via email and our Facebook page at Upcycle Part Shop. But we're really excited about that and we can't wait to stand apart with you. I see that we have um, some more questions. So I'm going to stop sharing right now and get back to where we were okay, and see what's we, going on. We also had another Questions. announcement. Ron, do you want to talk about the December exhibit? Uh, oh, thanks. Yeah. That was the last one. Uh, we, we have uh, joined forces with, with the Art House. Lila Voss is executive director. So we're going to be having an exhibit uh, in, in the gallery at Art House on Denison Avenue in December. We haven't like, you know, pinpointed the actual date yet, but this will include all the hats made. You know, if, you're, if you want to submit your hat that you make in the workshop, it could be in the show. Uh, there'll be the third grade students hats in the show. There'll be all the professional artists hats created in the show. So there'll be a, a culmination of every hat made who, is, who are willing to participate and willing to include their hat in this, in this show. And I also want to point out we just had recently published uh, the art hat, <clears throat> HAF Connects hat catalog was just produced. This is featuring all the art hats, all from the professional artists. Uh, this art catalog will be available uh, for purchase. It, it, you know, I will have some, you know, today uh, if, you, if you're interested. Uh, it's a really wonderfully designed uh, catalog. My, my, actually, my niece and my brother are both graphic designers, and I'm fortunate to have them in my family. You know, they designed the website, and they designed all of our graphic stuff, so they did an amazing job uh, with this catalog. These, these will be available. This will detail as narratives of, from each artist, how they made their, their hat. It has biographies of each artist, and there's an introduction by Kathy in, in this particular uh, uh, issue. We're really mm -hmm. happy to have this. And also, um, I, want, I wanted to, to mention Lynn Chapman, uh, if any other artists out there who are not from the United States, Lynn, I think, is the only person who is outside the country. Um, I don't know, you know, you still are very well, welcome to participate. Lynn is an amazing artist. I mean, she does some amazing work in plastics. I was, like, blown away by her work. Uh, so I, I'm excited to see what she creates. And if she has any questions about how to make her wireframe, or if she needs one cent. If she needs one cent, unfortunately, she has to pay for the, the postage, which is now, postage has gone up for some reason since the coronavirus. It's, it's crazy how everything has been affected by that. But it would be easier if you, know, you can have some kind of construct your own frame 
and embellish your hat and then ship it to, uh, to, to us. And we'll talk more about that if you need some more answers or questions or whatever. So I really would love to have you participate. Okay, we have a couple additional questions before we turn it back over to Julie and see how the artists are doing. Um, one question was whether the parade will be videotaped. Uh, we will make sure to capture the parade in some way so that it can be shared with everyone. Um, also, can we use other recycled materials or does it have to be completely plastic or a percentage? It, it, plastic is the theme. So plastic, we really want to keep it and simple, keep the thematic approach with plastic. So we're asking that it is plastic. Okay, and then Ron, could you tell us what the price of the catalog is and okay. where we can get them? The catalog is $20. $20. Uh, you can get them. We'll have some today at uh, Upcycled Part Shop. And they're also, they're also available at Ramp Arts Gallery. They, they are there. And if you, I can also mail them to you if you want. Just, just you know, email me and I can get them, get a copy to you. Okay, thank you. And so, Julie, do you want to give us an update on the, how the artists are doing? Sure. So I did want to show um, one more hat, too, that I missed because we tucked it in the corner for our workshop. Let me just turn the camera. Okay. So this is Ron's favorite um, hat. <laughs> and I love this hat, too, made out of the cigarette butts. <laughs> and Lolita's on the call with us, right? She's on Zoom Hi, with Lolita. us right now. Yeah, um, and Lalita did. A Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, hi. Or can you hear me okay? Yeah, tell hi. us about your hat. I'm kind of at work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's a smelly job. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was very interesting creating that during COVID. Um, I intentionally, uh, initially, I was trying to collect cigarette butts from other people. However, we were called on the COVID thing around the world, and that didn't happen. So I ended up smoking, more smoking all these cigarettes. Yeah, it's, it was a challenge. Um, and then it evolved into a headpiece, and I'm Native American, so it kind of just evolved in this tribal piece to me, on top of it being a bad habit and the source of the plastic plastic is just a phenomenal thing how we've gotten so used to plastic over the years and it's almost no escape of this toxic material you know so um i had fun doing it though actually and, we can, uh, i can smell it through my mask just so you know <laughs> <laughs> thank you for sharing that lolita it's beautiful work no problem I wish I was okay. There in so, do you guys to want to see more work on the workshop? The, uh, progress. <laughs> progress in quotes. Progress. Julie, could okay. you also take us to the yellow sculpture? For oh, a sure. Sorry, Jeff. So we have another sculpture from Ron too. Ron, this is made out of bleach bottles or Tide bottles. Uh, detergent bottles, liquid detergent, detergent bottles. Okay, I love this one. It so, um, reminds me of a kind of a African mask yeah. or African art. Is that your inspiration? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yellow, if, yellow, yellow has been an ongoing theme of mine. Um, I've had several installations where were completely yellow. Yellow symbol is a symbolic gesture re representing caution or warning that we are conf confronted with by plastics and what is going to the environment. So yellow has been a thematic theme in several of my projects. Okay. What else would you all like to see? Um, well, actually, great. we have another question for Ron. What is the gauge of wire that you use? Someone's asking if they can use a wired tomato cage. I, my, the gauge I use is a 22 gauge, which is, is relatively thin wire. You can actually cut it with scissors. 
so it's easy, easily malleable. Uh, it's easily cut. So you know, and and the reason why I use wire as opposed to like a wax thread wire penetrates the hole easier, and you and it's easier to be tight. You can tie it down easy. It just wraps around easier. But wire is that that gauge is very sharp, and it, it's it's like you know, it's, it's it can cut. But but Julie, it it will be wonderful if you could. Show them my work in the hallway. Would that is that would that be out of the question? Is do you have that capability? I do. Um, somebody's going to have to show me where it is. There you haven't seen piece hanging in the hallway from Ron. Or what we need to do is encourage people to go see the exhibit in person. Um, I also see that Gina Washington is on the Zoom with us too, and I believe that it, the battery one is her design. I wonder, Gina, not. To Put you on the spot. You you can say no, but I wondered if you wanted to say anything about your piece, like Lolita did. Yeah. Well, it's not just batteries, but you know, it's tiny little things because we seem to take things for granted. You know, everyday things that we do. So water bottle. I have cousins who just can't drink water from the faucet, and they have to get water bottles. And um, you know, so all the little things that mount up with that. I have to have hearing aids, so I put those on the um on the bottles because. These are really tiny too, and they're toxic to the environment. So, you know, plastic is one thing, but there's all these other little things too. The other hat I did um, was made out of um, um, candy wrappers. So it's just like Halloween's coming up and, you know, are we gonna go trick or treating? Even if we don't, candy might be quarantined, but even if it is, those things are usually wrapped in plastic. And what makes those really bad also is the fact that they're a mix, mix mosh of not just plastic but other stuff so they can't be broken down like regular plastic things can they can't be recycled um, unless we take them and do something with them because they are so um, mixed up some of them are straight up plastic but um, the other ones that are not you know to break them down would be even more difficult so you know I kind of utilize you know, those two different things he didn't show the the candy wrapper one which I like most because it's colorful <laughs> But the water bottle one, if you took that and shook it, it, it it's like a sh shaker ray. So it also makes sound with it too. But um, this was a challenge and I still have a hat to do. So I'm, I'm using that as a workshop hat. So whatever workshops we do beyond this, we'll, you know, you'll find me working on that hat as we go. Thank you for sharing. Okay, so um, is anyone else going to be uh, picking up their hat today from three to four? We want to make sure to not pack up and leave before you pick up your hat. Um, also, mm -hmm. we want to encourage wow. everyone to visit the Ramparts Gallery. Watch for the email coming from me with next steps. And then I hope you can all join us on October 3rd as we continue the conversation. Okay, and with that, we'll wrap up. Thank you everyone for joining us and I can't wait to see your creations. Bye, have a good Thank weekend. Thank you everybody.